Hello there, Warhammer fans. Today I want to do another tutorial of, um, in this case, what we're going to do is the uh, uh, glowing effects on a sword. Um, before we get started, of course, I uh, just kind of want to soak in the glory of this Optimus Prime Dread Knight that I recently got done converting. And I've got everything done on him except for the sword, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, and this is kind of going along with a theme of uh, 40k crossovers that I have. So I've got the Ghostbusters over here, the Ninja Turtles, all Space Marines. Um, but you know what? You know, I'm probably going to do a video with all of those a little bit later, but let's just get started into uh, the sword. Now, this is a, a bigger sword, but the techniques that we're going to use today are going to actually work for any size sword, uh, whether it be your, you know, regular... Uh, marine-sized power sword or these giant swords or uh, even some of the, the, the larger ones like the, the Wraith Knight sword or something like that. Um, now, you, there's of course different colors, so you can do these in blue, red, green, whatever color you want. I'm choosing uh, orange because Optimus has that orange energy on. Um, so I've already primed the sword in this kind of dull matte orange. So I always recommend that you start with a medium color so that you can build up the outsides and tone down the inside. Um, so for example, if you were starting with a blue, I would do something like a like a medium blue here. Uh, that way you can build up the edges uh, white or um, uh, and then kind of do like a royal blue like this on the inside. But for this orange, I'm going to do... Uh, Uriel yellow, and I, I really like the, the brightness, the, the vibrancy of that color. Um, and that's going to be building up, and then the outer edges, we're going to use uh, white scar. For the, uh, we're going to do kind of a glaze of this bestial brown, kind of in the inside, just to kind of tone it down, and then uh, on the absolute inside of that, uh, we're going to do a wash. Now this is actually a mix of seraphim se uh, sepia, and Agrax Earthshade. I, I liked both of them, and I had just a little bit left. I just ended up mixing them together uh, just to save uh, paint pots, and I actually like that mix. It's, it it kind of has the um, the best of both. It's a little stronger than the sepia, but it has kind of that uh, redder uh, vibe to the um, that the Agrax Earthshade does not have. So, uh, and then my secret weapon. You can get this at a dollar store. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not a dollar store, uh, just a, a hobby store, Walmart, but uh, this is a, an actual neon fluorescent orange. Uh, so this will actually glow under blue light or black light, and um, we're going to actually do a glaze of this on the entire outer surface when we're done. Um, another quick note is that when you do this, you want to have a nice soft brush, uh, brush because we're going to do a lot of glazes. Uh, the difference between a glaze and a wash, now a wash is very translucent, as you can see. You can kind of see through that bottle, whereas a glaze is a little bit more opaque. Um, so we're going to kind of water these down to be more glazes. Uh, so you need that soft brush, and I also like this guy right here. It has kind of an angle on it. It's really good to get straight lines. I'm also experimenting with a bent brush. I, I just started using this, and I actually really like it because uh, it can actually give me, um, you know, if I'm working at an angle this way and I want to uh, do a perpendicular, it's it's a lot easier than trying to move your wrist around. So um, might be using this, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I, I took a little bit of the Seal Brown into my palette. I'm going to take some water, and I'm just going to get this... Um, Maybe about two good dips in there. Uh, I want it to still have the opacity, but to also be really, really, um, really, really thin, because uh, I don't want it to have any hard edges. Although it's okay um, if there are some hard edges, because I am going to use this uh, orange as a glaze, and that'll tie everything together. But um, if you're doing this and you don't have that neon color, um, you actually can. Um, the more watered down that you make your glaze, um, the more layers you'll have to do, but the more control you get and the, the more, um, uh, or the, the, the softer the edges will be. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start in the inside here. And I'm not too concerned about it being perfectly straight. In fact, the slight shake of my hand is actually going to give it a more uneven look because what I'm going for with this is not necessarily a smooth glow, but to have the the outside um, kind of almost patchy. Like the the outside is is red hot, and the inside's kind of cooling at different temperatures. But I'm just gonna do that, and then I'm gonna actually 
Don't forget to do both sides. And now we're going to let that dry. And the idea here is that we're going to create a nice contrast. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Because the, the darker that we make the inside and the lighter that we make the outside, the more it actually is going to look like it's an ethereal glow. And next we're going to get this Uriel Yellow. And I'm not actually going to water this first layer down as much. Uh, just enough to get the paint flowing. Uh, yellow itself is not a super pigment heavy color, so it already has a little bit of translucent. So you don't have to water it down as much. And for this first couple layers... I don't necessarily, I'm not going to get all the way in the inside, I'm just going to do a little bit on the edge, keeping in mind that the very, very edge is actually going to be white, so I'm just going to cover over that, and then not forgetting to get into this section here, and I also want to do just the very edge of this inside gap here. Now most most swords that you're probably going to work on don't actually have this interior section, uh, but you might also you might have this this angled ridge down the middle. And what I recommend is, you know, get some of your excess paint off your brush, uh, almost like a dry brush. But you're going to take the flat of the brush and just kind of pull. There we go. Just kind of pull that and let the very tip of the brush grab that paint. Now one thing that you probably notice is that it's not exactly a smooth transition yet, and that's all right. We want the contrast right now. Um, as we kind of start going into more layers, we'll, we'll kind of clean up some of that uh, discrepancy um, and this end up this will probably end up not even looking orange uh, by the time we're done um, that's what that that final uh, neon glaze will be uh, for but we're really focusing on trying to get the contrast as high as possible we want those outer edges to be uh, as yellow as we can get them as, as bright as we can get them um, and then we'll do an edge highlight of white over the entire thing um, in just a moment I'm going to do the uh, wash on the inside here with the, the kind of darker brown Agrax sepia wash. Uh, just in the very, 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 very tips. In fact, I'll probably use a detail brush for that. All right, so now that I've got the yellow uh, kind of as bright as I want it, I'm, now I'm going to take... Um, let this dry, and I'm going to actually water it down to make a really, really thin glaze. And we'll take a look at that. I had to change my angle here a bit because um, you know, this next part you really need to have uh, stable. And so I actually want the, the model to, to just be on the, um, the table here, and hopefully you'll be able to see. So as I put on this glaze, really all I'm doing is softening those edges. The, the paint is watered down to the point where it's not very opaque. And so we basically have a glaze here. So some of these rougher edges, I'm going to kind of just put on that paint. And what you can do is then just kind of pull it down. So you don't want any of it to glob up where the darker part is. So I'm going to pull it towards the edge there. And then let's do the same thing uh, on the top. So I've got it moved, but I'm going to keep it down on the table here. No, I don't think that's going to get... I don't think you're going to be able to see that. There we go. Now let's move on to kind of trying to get the darker parts as dark as we can get them. 
So I've got some of this wash here. Now normally you can just kind of pull this right out of the pot, uh, but I did want to add just a very tiny bit of water on this uh, to really make sure uh, that it is translucent. So I've got it mixed in my palette here, and I'm just going to take this line part of my brush. So you see how it's, it's got, if I turn it like this, it almost goes to a point. Uh, so that's what I want. I want to basically do just a couple little lined dots kind of in the middle there. And I might actually need to do this a couple of times. Uh, in fact, as I'm thinking about this, if I, once we do the uh, orange glaze, uh, since it is a neon color, you might have to continue to do this once the glaze is dry. Like I said, I'm not going for a smooth look. Um, I probably could do that. Um, it would take a little bit more time, a little bit more concentration. Uh, the point of this video is really to show you that, you know, you can achieve an effect that isn't necessarily the cleanest if you're more of a beginner. Uh, maybe you don't have the steadiest of hands. Um, you can actually use that to your advantage by kind of giving it some of this kind of uneven, uh, almost otherworldly look there. So actually before we do our glaze, let's go ahead and do our, our white edge highlight because that's going to really make the, the very edge pop. So I've got some of the white on my palette here. Uh, I've kind of taken a lot of it off my brush and I'm just kind of using a flat brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just the edge of it and go along the edge of the blade. Just like that. Sometimes you may have to kind of flip the brush to get a little bit more of your paint on there. All right, and then just like we did before with the middle, um, you can just kind of take the side of your brush, go all the way down the side. We just want a very, very very thin line of that. And you know, that actually doesn't look half bad. I haven't even done the glaze yet, but uh, it looks like there's a kind of a smooth transition. So if I, if I wasn't going to use that neon glaze, I probably would have used colors that were a little bit closer to each other. Uh, probably used reds, oranges, and, and then yellow to actually highlight the edge. Um, but since I'm using this glaze, I went with a little bit more contrast. So instead of reds, I used the brown. Uh, instead of a white for the edge highlight, I just used white. That's going to really drive my contrast, so I'm hoping this will have uh, a really stark effect, a little bit more than just the, your traditional blending. So let's get our glaze ready and check it out. So first off, um, I am going to thin this down, but I just wanted to kind of uh, let you see kind of some of the, the opacity of uh, these neon paints. They're kind of almost goopy, kind of sticky, but they, they don't like really leave a lot uh, on the back, which we can use to our advantage, but just be aware that, um, you know, especially if you're going to water it down like I'm going to do, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water here just to make it uh, flow a little bit more smoothly and consistently, um, but we may be doing more than one coat. Um, but let's see what that first coat looks like. So I've got our so what I like to do is I like to start kind of in the middle and, and brush out uh, because there's a lot of paint on my brush, so. All right. And then I kind of go up into this, because we need to go all the way into here. And what's nice about this, these neon paints is that um, when they dry, they often dry very, very um, kind of clearish, almost. So, you know, you've got a little bit of this goop that's like, accidentally got right there. Um, that's actually okay because when it dries, some of the, the silver paint underneath is going to show through and it'll actually make it look like it's glowing. So uh, I do that a lot with like Necron eyes and that kind of thing. I just kind of put a little white dot in the Necron eye and then just some of this green uh, neon paint all over the top. So, uh, and then of course, you notice I got a little bit of this goop on the, the edges. So I want to make sure that I check that when I finish this. But yeah, I can already tell that I am going to need a second coat of this because you don't want to apply your paint too thickly. 
because not only does it take longer to dry, but also uh, it, it does go on unevenly. So we just want to get that nice and covered. We'll let it dry. Let's make sure there's no large goops like right there. Let's kind of brush that off. And this one over here. So we'll let that dry and then do another uh, layer. And I think it's starting to look really nice. All right, well, I appreciate you guys sticking with me for this uh, longer video. I'll probably do a little bit more touch-ups. Um, I, I think I'm 98% I'm there. I always have that little 2% that I always like to touch up um, after I think I'm done. So, uh, but yeah, this, this looks pretty good. I, I definitely think that this looks like an Energon sword. Uh, so you take the techniques that uh, we learned here today and you can apply them to uh, a bunch of different things. But thank you for watching and happy painting.